What's up, Jabroni? It's me here. Welcome back to yet another reaction. Today, we're hopping into Gilmore Girls episode number seven of season number two, Like Mother, Like Daughter. Hopefully, you've been enjoying the series. If you have, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Head over to Patreon for the full, uncut, unedited reaction episodes extra early over there. If you want them, if you don't want them, totally cool. Episodes here whenever they show up. Um, so, yeah, last episode, we were presenting Lorelai Gilmore. Of course, we were showing the rich world what Rory looks like. Kind of a... Uh, Introducing her to the entire rich community. We also got to see an interesting dynamic between uh, Emily and um, Richard. I, I kept calling him Jack. I've been calling him Jack for a couple episodes. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea why. Um, but Richard. Um, so, you know, I've been seeing, I mean, I've been, uh, they were kind of, uh, fighting and bickering a lot more than normal we found out it's because richard is kind of like on the verge of being phased out which he's not used to and he's not really adapting to that well lorelei was not at first it was kind of a joke but then throughout the episode you saw her like oh no this is way more serious than i thought and she kind of was comforting her mother at the end which was interesting and the mother kind of accepted the comforting uh other than that Luke is still with his nephew, Jesse. And yeah, that's where we're at. Being help was with, with Rory at the ball thing. Yeah, let's hop in here. Let's have a good time. Like mother, like daughter. Let's see what that's about. Pretty much. Here we go. He never flirts with any of the women. Do you notice that? He's flirted with you numerous times. Don't start. Hey, flirt with him now. We need coffee. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. We're just dying for some refreshments. Keep your pants on. You can turn it off and turn it on so fast. <laughs> hey, I found a CD under the front seat of our car. Did you uh, lose one? Mm, not that I know of, but I'm kind of sloppy with them. So you did. I was hiding very man alone. You confess. But he was very big when I was very small, and it's the live version <laughs> he where he very... does a medley of all the commercial jingles he's written. <laughs> Don't worry, everyone's allowed a guilty pleasure now and again. The record, you're a stickler for punctuality. Mm -hmm. I am a stickler. Yes, I only slipped one time last year. I hit a deer. Actually, he hit me, or she did, or not me, my car. But um, then he or she ran away, and a I think it turned out okay. Uh, I didn't see it again, so I can't definitively say, but I did look for him or her. Okay. It's a big story for me. I'm surprised I don't tell it better. <laughs> tell me what you took the reason I asked you here. Okay. You don't seem to interact much with the other students. I, I do, sometimes. In class, all the time. But rarely outside of class. At lunch, you're always by yourself. That's when I catch up on my reading. And that Walkman, it makes you very unapproachable. You approached me. And you almost <laughs> jumped out of your skin. What does that tell you? That I'm jumpy. What does she expect you to do? She said mix it up. Make mix friends. it up? What does that mean? I guess that means going up to strange kids at school and saying, hey, mind if I awkwardly butt in where I don't belong and don't want to be? The whole thing's ridiculous. Chilton is a cult. Great, Kirk. And I just want you to know that I overheard, and you're absolutely right. I carried a duffel bag and ate lunch by myself my entire school career, and I turned out just fine. Okay. We <laughs> I'm still going down there. <laughs> Them would be honored by your participation. Okay, my schedule We're is... We're all tremendously busy, Miss Gilmore. I hope you're not too busy to do what's best for you or what's best for Rory, are you? No. Excellent. Let us know what it'll be. Yeah, well. yeah. Future. So we both got busted. Yes. Great. Now I have to pick a group or a cause or sponsor a club or something. This sucks. But hey, I've been thinking. I mean, the whole reason we did this Chilton thing is for you to get into Harvard, right? Right. And these fanatics that, that run your school, they're the ones that write the letters to the fancy colleges saying things like, hey, she's keen, look, look at her, or... Well, not hey. Hey. Mm. There's a bad draft over there where I usually sit. It's kind of like a big downward gust. It's not exactly total we're not in Kansas anymore, but it's still pretty darn uncomfortable, especially when you've just gotten your hair to behave. So can I sit here? Uh, yeah. Rory. What's yours? Francie. You're Francie? No, she's Francie. I'm Ivy. Francie's spokesman. Well, I am a very <laughs> important person and everyone knows very important people never speak for themselves. I truly believe the whole homecoming dance rituals will be put to sleep. Or at least assigned a new color scheme. Wait, does Paris hang here? Rory, huh? Do they call you what? Not unless provoked. <laughs> no nickname? Actually, Rory is a nickname. Oh my god, my is this the cool Laura. table? Laura, Did Rory that's a weird hop into the cool table? Well, Lem, what can I say? Yeah, Rory. God, oh, you're like shit. a pop-up book from hell. You were sitting with the pups. 
How did you do it? The who? Puffs, the Chilton Puffs. You were at their table and I want to know how. I don't know. I just sat down. Nobody just sits down with them. You have to be invited. Paris, it's not the Costa Nostra. No, they're she the Puffs, a pop -up the most influential book from sorority hell. Chilton. I'm extremely disappointed in you, Lorelai. Hold on, Mom. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I had lunch with Biddy Charleston today, and she told me what happened with you and the headmaster. Yeah, sure. Jeez, someone do nothing all day but hide under his desk with a tape recorder? <laughs> Actually, uh, this isn't the booster club, is it? Yes, it is. Man, oh, her shirt is sparkly. God, you're not wearing sweatshirts. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, you know what? Never mind. <clears throat> I'm Laura like Gilmore. That shirt. Sorry. That's oh, nice. Yeah. She wasn't sure you'd show up. <laughs> so, uh, fall fundraiser, what do we do? Well, last year we had the usual luncheon with a silent auction and a salsa band. Uh, um... I run an inn. You do? Which one? The Independence Inn. It's in Stars Hollow. Oh, I've been there. It's lovely. And we have a terrific chef who's never once hospitalized an entire function. <laughs> and, well, I mean, I don't know exactly what you're looking for, but we do functions there all the time. Who, you know, to model the clothes. Any chance I'm finally going to get to see Kate Moss eat something? <laughs> oh, no, no. We're the models. We? Wait, who's we? We, the women in this room. Me, you, we. Me? Yes. Oh, well, <gasps> by the way, welcome to the boosters. We're thrilled to have you. Oh, oh, Wait, what? <laughs> Why are the moms Great. being the models? And, and I volunteered to organize it. Well, good for you. Yes, and since I know how concerned you are about how Rory is perceived at Chilton, I knew you'd want to be involved somehow, so you're going to be one of the models. Excuse me? Uh, yeah, so it's next Saturday, <laughs> either at four, and provide hair and makeup. Lorelai, you can't be serious. I'm approaching you. This might go well. Sit with us, please. Um... Okay. A drive-by invite? <laughs> Fuss, please. So we've decided to extend an invite to you. You can eat here anytime you like. Wow, oh. that's nice of you. Thanks. So can I ask about this whole sorority thing? Pardon? Sorora what? I thought you guys were... We have no idea what you're talking about. That's right. After all, what's the point of a secret society if it's not a secret? Really, I think she's actually thinking of joining another non-existent group. What? But her family's fully puffed. I don't know. Maybe I heard it wrong, but I think that's what I heard her say. A, a voluntary defector, Francie. I know. Oh, shit. Paris? Yeah? I think the wall <laughs> can hold itself up just fine, don't you? What? You should sit. So, have we discussed homecoming yet? Not to my knowledge. I truly believe okay. that the homecoming dance Maybe you'll be besties. <laughs> Fine, man. Follow me. By the way, you do tell people that you're the one that named my toolbox, right? <laughs> toolbox dirty. Oh, oh okay, Jesus. Um, she what? said toolbox to dirty. Hey, I put this thing together. Yes, and I loved your work in Pisa. Now, get out of the way, please. Oh. I can fix it. Thank you. So we're right back. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, Ava, the room's right back here. Him. Who? There, man with tools. Who is that? Oh, that's Luke. Luke, I like Luke. What? Uh, <laughs> oh, he's adorable, and he looks strong. Is he strong? Oh, I don't know. I don't think he's going to be in a sideshow anytime soon. <laughs> but he can get the lid off a pickle jar. What? Together. You're the mother-daughter team. Oh, my God. Whoa. I have outfits for one mother-daughter team. Your names are on the outfits. You're it. Uh, mother-daughter team. Hey, yeah, look at this. Kill it. <laughs> look at her. <laughs> She's having a blast. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Look at that. Emily seems proud. Lorelai, congratulations. I would put on your good pajamas, you know, the cute ones with the cakes on them, and brush your hair and put on a little lip gloss. Why? You're being kidnapped tonight. Wait, what? Excuse me? Yeah. Mom, my kidnappers are here. Okay. She said my kid. <laughs> we still got a couple more girls to get. Oh my God. Look at Paris. So that's how you look when you've just woken up? Um, yeah. Nothing in my life is fair. Uh. What are we doing at Chilton? Will you please be quiet? You're being puffed. What you're about to do and what you're about to say will remain forever between the members of the Puffs and only the members of the Puffs. I have friends. I'm fine. Well, how nice it must be to be you. Maybe someday I'll stumble into a Disney movie and suddenly be transported into your body. Puffs? You have to hold the candle. I wrote this. I pledge myself to the Puffs. Uh, loyal, I'll always be. Sing out, Louise. 
a P to start, two F's at the end, and a U sitting in between. I knew I it. I wouldn't do that again, Miss Gilmore. I knew it. This is unbelievable. What was that, Miss Gilmore? Shh. Nothing. No, I distinctly heard you mumbling something in a rather disgruntled tone. I'd like to know what it was. Oh, no, sis. I said this is unbelievable. And why is this unbelievable, Miss Gilmore? Throw because the I bus. didn't even want to be here in the first place. Oh, now, Miss Gilmore. Things were going fine. My grades were good. I joined the paper. My routine was down. Your routine was... And I have friends. Hmm? Part of the initiation was ringing a bell. So that's what I was doing when security showed up and they called you. That's what you got busted for? Ringing yeah. a bell? Mm-hmm. That's it? Bell ringing? Yes. Yep. Were you at least smoking a Cuban cigar while you were doing it? Mom. No, I mean, a bad girl. How many times have I told you not to ring bells? <laughs> Let's go. They can dent or scratch, and they make dogs crazy. Yesterday, I saw you talking to Ava. You know she's in my booster club? Yeah, I know who she is. Oh, good. Well, good. So, anyhow, I saw you guys talking alone and seemed kind of private. My side at all? I am a grown man. You cannot tell me who to date. I'm not telling you who to date. I'm telling you who not to date. You can't tell me that either. Look. I will date who I like. And if that's Look at you. With your plans, then sorry. And if you don't want to hear things, then don't listen. But if you don't like oh, it, you can just shit. deal with it. Okay, I'll Damn. just deal with it. Come back here. Okay. Uh... And by the way, I wasn't asking her out. I was giving her directions for the quickest way back to Hartford. It was very romantic. I said you take a right at Deerfield and you catch the I-5 and you take it south. Oh man, hot stuff. Yeah, you went a bit. Uh... That is so typical of you. <laughs> what? That is not the quickest way back to Hartford. Everybody knows that you take Maine to Cherry to Linwood and then grab the I-11. Everybody knows that, Luke. Do you mind? Hey. Hey, this is one of the girl, the other girl that didn't go in. Wait, really? This was a great episode. I really love this episode. Like, for some reason, my my brain is telling me nine. <laughs> I don't know if it is a nine, but like, I loved almost everything that happened in this episode from the like real good, the weird, we like really weird moment at the end there. Uh, I love the uh, Lorelai and, and Emily situation. That was awesome. Love them trying to get Rory into the social click and the whole thing with Paris. Love that. What I didn't love. Um, and not that it was bad for the show. It's the character choice for Rory, right? They didn't have Rory. I don't know. I feel like Rory being part of a clique could have grown her character a little bit, made her try like be something different, and they didn't go that route. Instead, she pretty much threw them under the bus. Or maybe not threw them under the bus, but she pretty much made it seem like she didn't want to be in part of the crew and. I don't know. I, I, it was just a weird thing. Like, it just sound very weird. It made it feel like, like the way Rory was acting at the end there made her come off like Paris as a character that has like a stick up her butt, like goody two shoes girl. Like, oh my God, we're breaking into this office. Like, like if she's never no, she, she's never known what, what a sorority is or what anything like that is. Like I feel, I don't know. I feel like there were, there should have been a, there should have been any there shouldn't have, there shouldn't have been a reason for her not to go along with what was happening because what was happening there wasn't like oh we're breaking the law. I mean maybe we were, but like Laurel I said, oh you you rang a bell, okay, and I feel like that it kind of held back her character. I mean I like at the end that one girl, but even that moment at the end where. Rory's sitting alone with earphones and then the other girl walks over and then the girl does the same thing. That doesn't add, that, that doesn't prove anything to me. It just means, oh, you're, this is the table where kids can come and sit and just listen to music and read and not pay attention to one another. I don't know. That's literally the only thing that I, it's not even that I have a problem with it. I just wish they would have gone the other route. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to give the episode a nine. Um, I just had a lot of fun with it. I was really engaged. I was really into it. Love seeing Lorelai succeed and be happy and Emily be kind of proud of her and Luke kind of yell at Lorelai about <laughs> that whole thing with that other mom, even though Luke had no intentions of dating her. Um, but yeah, let's bring it down. We start off, we're talking about Luke and Luke's happy and the flirting and uh, the, you know, does Luke date or has he dated anybody since Rachel? All this kind of stuff. This hops us right into this episode, a beginning of the episode where Rory is literally the kid that brings a million books. And here she says she has a lot of friends. No, no, no. Not here. At the end there, she says she has a lot of friends. No, no, no. She has one friend. She has Lane. 
and then she has a boyfriend. Other than that, we've seen her with zero other friends. So, you know, that argument for her was mm, was fine for that moment, but it didn't really. She doesn't have a lot of friends. She is, and she is a loner. She is very much more of a loner than she than not a loner. Um, so you know, she goes to school with her heavy ass backpack, does her daily routine, gets caught into the guidance counselor's office. She says, "You're antisocial, pretty much. Don't talk to other kids. You, don't, you all you do is study and read alone. All true statements." The college stuff all makes sense. Yeah, colleges do want people that are going to be a little more social than Rory. Rory does not do anything social in school. Um, I mean, she works on the paper, but even that isn't social for her. Uh, you know, we go to the dean. The dean kind of yells at Lorelai about not being an uninvolved parent. Lorelai then goes and... Oh, no, this is, this is the next day. Goes and she hangs out with these girls. You know, she's being herself, being her normal self. She had the balls to just ask a random group of strangers, um, which I wouldn't have had. Uh, I love how Paris is walking by in Paris season and that face of what the hell. Then, of course, you know, Paris freaking the fuck out the way she does. You have the comment of, don't tell them I didn't, that you don't like me and all this other stuff. Um, you know, Paris being Paris saying, tell them whatever you want, walks away like she's about to start crying. Go have a barbecue. We then talk here. We, or Lorelai says she's part of the booster club. We go to the booster meeting and we meet some not so crappy people, some moms who seem kind of decent. And they need a spot for a event. They agree to do, Lorelai suggests as a place. They agree to it. They go to it and then they mention, oh yeah, it's a modeling thing. We're all gonna model. And then of course, Lorelai's not happy, but she invites Emily and bam. That's what's happening. I like this little drive-by here. Little drive-by moment. I was like, oop, doo, doo, doo. Sit with us, please. It just keeps walking. Like, what is that? She sits over there. Paris walks by. Of course, Rory does. Tries to do the, her best to make Paris look good and say that it's not about that. And then throws in, she might be looking at somebody else. Um, Lorelai freaking out about the event. Luke is here um, fixing things. The mom comes here and has a thing for Luke. You, get, you see hints of jealousy from Lorelai. We get dressed up and then we play girls who just want to have fun. And the best moment was seeing Emily's face of how happy she was. This is awesome. Hey, look how happy she is. Look how happy she is. This is awesome. I love this. She's so happy. She's so big smiles. And then I love seeing, look at her. Like it's so fun. And then Laura, like, getting into it. That was awesome. Uh, then we go here. You know, the banquet went amazing. Uh, Laura, like, sees Luke talking to the mom. Laura, like, mentions that Rory's going to be kidnapped. Rory gets kidnapped. So this part did make me feel a little bit sad for Paris. So Laura, uh, Laura, told the girls called Laura, uh, Laura, like, told her about this. Rory. Or I told Rory about it. Bam. Rory looks actually pretty normal, like a, like pretty. And then Paris was not told. And Paris, you know, looks like how she would normally look for sleeping. And then she mentions my, nothing in my life is fair. And then Rory, this is this is the part where I was like, Rory, just be, be cool, man. Just be cool. <laughs> like, you don't have to be a stickler for the rules all the time. It's okay. We're not going to burn the school down. We're going in to do something here. It's clearly going to be a ritual. You can clearly tell. Harris wants to go in. This girl does not. This is the girl that I think got the answers with us. Um, Rory want, Paris wants to go in. Rory does not. They go in. They have Rory go first. What I thought was going to happen is that Rory was going to go first, do the whole thing. They were going to break in, and then they, were never gonna, they weren't going to have sworn Harris into the club. But that doesn't seem to be the, the, the case here. They do the thing. My man brings the cops, which is weird because it, it makes it seem like this is something that we always do. And then, of course, Laura Rory decides to uh, do this whole spew about I never wanted to be friends with these people, all this stuff. Eventually, throw, not throwing them under the bus, but just kind of throwing shade a little bit. I don't know. It was weird. Not shade. It was just weird. Like, just, I don't know. I guess she, she wanted to defend herself, whatever, but... 
just kind of made the other girl seem i would have been mad i would have been like look at this girl you better than us like i would have been so taking it the wrong way nonetheless lorelei comes here it says what did you get in trouble for ringing the bell let me over the next day lorelei tells luke that don't date the other girl which luke takes it the wrong way or no takes it the right way he's upset she's telling him who to date he never tells her who to date it's a whole thing and she gets mad she walks out and then at the end we just see kind of rory here by herself with the girl that was also there and it would have been a cooler moment if when the girl sat down rory took off her headphones but continued to read but made a hint of an effort to talk to the girl and said she didn't make an effort and it's i don't know it's it's, it's supposed to be like a good moment like oh you could be a loner and be different but i don't know talk i don't know be do something yeah i know but nonetheless i really love the episode i thought it was really good i had a lot of fun with it and hopefully you guys did as well so like comment subscribe patreon for the full reaction uncut unedited episodes extra over there if you want them if you don't totally cool episodes here whenever they show up uh, but yeah, I'm going to get out of here and I'll talk to you guys later.